Under the surface, laid on the seabed, numerous high-capacity submarine cables connect countries and continents. This is the result of a long history in submarine communications. In 1850, a small steam tug chartered by the English Channel Submarine Telegraph Company deployed the first international cable between England and France. The capacity was 10 words per minute, but the cable operated only for one day before being cut by fishermen. After a couple of attempts with very short lifetimes, the first real long-distance international cable system was put in commercial service between Ireland and Newfoundland in 1866. Based on today's standards, the offered capacity was still extremely low, with the transmission rate of 12 words per minute. Year after year, more and more submarine cable systems were installed to ensure redundancy for maximum connection reliability and to offer electrical communication by sea beyond the North Atlantic area. Today, optical subsea cables carry more than 95% of the world's international voice and data traffic. Given the investment and time required to build a new cable system, it is of the utmost importance to maximize the capacity of the existing systems. Increasing the system capacity requires characterization of existing cable systems and field trials of advanced technologies like coherent 100G transmission. Xterra has tested multiple cable systems worldwide. Today we are at Land's End in Cornwall, UK, at one of the endpoints of the historic transatlantic cable route. Land's End is a strategic location for cable landing stations, as it allows the shortest transatlantic route length. The submarine cable under test is about 6,200 kilometers long. It is on this historic cable route, literally the vital telecom artery of the Western world, that most of the technical innovations have been implemented for the first time before being adopted by other systems. While the subsea cable is relatively protected in the middle of the Atlantic by the water depth, down to 8,000 meters, the shore ends and the landing of the cable represent significant challenges for maintaining the integrity of the cable in hazardous environments. The range of hazards the submarine cable has to cater for includes damage and snagging by anchors or trawler nets and natural hazards like rock abrasion and slumping of the seabed. The long 150-year history of submarine cables has led to the adoption of new approaches like cable burial and new technologies like cable armoring for higher reliability of the end-to-end -end cable connection. From the seaside, when the cable emerges onto the beach, the cable typically goes over land into ducts that are buried beneath the sand surface. The presence of the ducts is clearly flagged to avoid the negative consequences of digging. From the beach, the optical cable is routed to the cable landing station. Once the cable reaches the landing station, the different fibre pairs are connected to the multiple line terminal equipment present in the cable station. After termination and regeneration, the optical signals are connected to the terrestrial optical network to reach the operator's points of presence. The capacity of the cable system is derived from the capacity carried by each optical wavelength transported along the cable. Wavelength division multiplexing, or WDM technology, allows combining the largest number of wavelengths with each supporting the highest data rate. The system design capacity is governed by the characteristics of the line, which consists of the optical fiber cable and repeaters. The two main focuses of the tests are to test the capabilities of Xterra's 100G transmission equipment on the cable under examination, and to ascertain the maximum system capacity using Xterra's 100G technologies. The system characterization tests are performed to provide detailed information on the following areas in particular. Optical signal to noise ratio of system. Pre-emphasis requirements at the points where the optical channels are launched into the system. System chromatic and polarization mode dispersions and terminal compensation requirements. And lastly, maximum system capacity. For this characterization testing activity, which is necessary to develop new transmission technologies and for Xterra to be in a position to commit to system design capacity when awarded an upgrade contract, the company has developed a specific test equipment kit. An optical spectrum analyzer is permanently connected to monitor the transmission from Xterra's test equipment to the line. 
The results of the testing will be summarized in a report at the end containing all major results and conclusions. For the cable owner, the test report will give clear indications on the maximum capacity that the system can support. For Xterra, the test report will be a highly valuable tool to better understand the behavior of existing cable systems when connected to next generation line terminal equipment and further improve interface card technology. Xterra has been working on the upgrade of submarine cable systems since 2001 and carried out its first commercial upgrade project in the first quarter of 2006. In 2012, Xterra equipped the first repeated cable system in commercial service with 100G wavelengths. We will be happy to talk with you about your next 100G subsea cable system.